Any future that will not require a change from you will not be different from the past. You should be more aligned with Yes, indeed, if there's a man to pray, there's a God to answer. The answers come for you. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 5. It says, In that day that the glory of God will be revealed, and all nations shall see it together. Upon the life of every man, there are spiritual deposits, there are ordinations. We are in such an arranged world where if you are not careful and you decide to go with the spirit, of, you might realize that after the rapture, if you made it, you kept your time doing what I never sent you to do. There are many pursuits in life. There are many cravings of the, on the earth right now. There is the urgent demand for survival. And so an average believer tend to have lost of the ordinations upon their life. While we were growing up, we kept hearing statements like, behind every conception, there is a commission. We grew up to understand that God is not in the habit of filling spaces on the earth. He doesn't want the world to be so populous. And so he decides to bring people on the earth. We begin to realize by the vantage point of scriptures. By the experiences of men who have obtained the promise. That for every soul that is privileged to pass through the gateway of a human. Has upon his earth. Upon his destiny, ordinations, and written statements. Hebrews chapter 10, I think, and verse 7, Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of books that were written concerning me. My and my burden in this period and dispensation is that may we not live our lives pursuing after, doing things, or achieving things that were not part of our ordinations. Yes, men can applaud us on the surface of the earth. We can, by the standard of men, have good reputation. Reputation is simply what men say about you. But there is a divine commendation, which has to be what God says about you. So we must be careful in the days we are, not to be carried away by the desire for survival. Sometimes when you get to the peak of life, then you begin to ask yourself, what next? The reason why you still pant after freedom the reason why you still pant after the cravings and the longings of the flesh i want to have a good house i want to have a good car and the rest of them i want to live a good life is because we have not still realized the power and the potency of an ordination how we will understand that men will be judged not on the basis of the kind of things they are masked on earth men will just judge not by their material possessions but by their alignment and to the degree to which they fulfilled the ordinations upon their life. The Bible speaks in Revelation, a very nice scripture which we've come out as it said, Thou art worthy, O God, to receive all glory and honor. For thou art created what? All things for thy will and for thy pleasure. So two things strikes my heart there. Number one is that everything created on the earth is created what? By his will. And for one sole reason. For his pleasure. So when a man carries such an understanding. He begins to understand the need to make maximal impact. Because there is a divine urgency upon us. Whether you like it or not, this present world is about to be wrapped up. The question is when you stand before the face of your maker, we literally said you established, you know, many, many, many businesses and companies. You had great houses or you fulfilled the testaments that were written concerning you. Are we following tonight? When we carry such an understanding, it helps us to put much of our time much of our effort, energy, and wisdom in the direction of our ordination. I love football so much, but this is what I'm called to do right now. To hold this mic and preach the gospel of Jesus. 
So I can't spend all my time on the pitch because I know I'll go nowhere. Are we following? So once a man can on time discover the reason of his existence, it helps him to discipline his energy, discipline his wisdom, put his strength and attention in the direction of his callings and ordination. Are we together? So we must be very careful in the days we are. You know, while the Lord was talking to me as regards the meeting, I brought about the topic of fire. Because I began to ask questions. Lord, if we pray for your move and your touch upon our life this way, why is it is majorly coined to those in ministry? We see those in other fields of the world living their life as if there is no need to carry his fire. And that's why we have been seeing of late so much of casualty in the body of Christ. Because someone just feels only the pastor needs to carry the anointing. Only the pastor needs to pant after God and desire his fire. So he forgets that even as a banker, someone stands in front of him and hypnotizes a Christian. And he doesn't know when he gave him the whole money. A believer standing in front of someone that has the ability to make his mind go off. The kind of faith that we are asked to contend for. John Wesley said, Oh God, set me on fire. The nations come watch me born. Set me on fire. That you are in the bank. And just by your conversations, the Bible says when Jesus speak, without even performing a miracle, men will look at him. What manner of wisdom is this? He spoke with so much power and authority. You are in your business and somebody come and put a charm and your business closed down and you bear a Christian name and attend a religious church. Something is wrong. And that's why you see an average believer has developed the habit and behavior of running from one prayer house to the other. Because they were never told that for themselves they have a need to contact what? The fire. Are we together? For yourself! That you can stand as a landlord and a caretaker over your family, over your business, over your career, over everything that concerns you. You can stand. How come you are traveling and could not discern that there are bandits? How come you were traveling and could not discern that so and so will take place? Why? We've left the prophetic for the prophets. Forgetting that the Bible tells us in Acts, I think chapter 7 or so, it said there were three daughters of Philip who did what? Prophesy. I came tonight for an impartation. I came tonight to lessen the burden upon me. That what you see your pastor do, you can do also. That you can begin to understand and pursue God the way he does, such that the way God shows up for him, he begins to show up for you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, including their leader Daniel, we are not pastors, we are not ministers of the gospel, we are mere administrators. In the city of Babylon. They were mere what? Administrators. They were so full of God. The Bible speaking in Daniel chapter 1. I think from verse 20. He said and they were found. Ten times better. They proved God so much. And stood as true witness of the divine for their generation. Such that a king could stand. And tell his complete kindred and kingdom. To worship a God he doesn't know anything about. By your appearance, convert your roommates. You know why I'm, I'm, I'm getting mad tonight about this? The Bible says that our assignment is to train the church. That the saints will go do the work of the ministry. You know why? Sheeps don't give birth. Shepherds don't give birth to sheep. It is sheep that reproduce. The assignment of the shepherd is to take care of the sheep. To ensure that the sheep is well fed. Once that is done, it is expedient that you see the sheep. Reproducing after its kind. How come you woke up from sleep? You got into because of a careless chanting that a careless man did, and headache is on you. You have to pack your books and go back to the hostel. Put your hands on your head, pray where you are sitting down, and say, Lord, tonight what will break upon me? What you came to do in my life, do it. Let your fire rest. Let your fire rest. Let your fire rest. Kilago si di kapara di dish kami ne de kai. Elavu se ne gidi gudus kambi li gidi gida. Ilaba basi di gidi gia takrada go sayuna me ne akata. Ilabe be 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 le si aga go lehosa. Perana magada si laga prana gedosa. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Now 
This is not about ministry. I didn't come tonight to steer you up because I want you to start a church. No. Now, even as a saint in the marketplace, you can perfectly represent him. This is about the rise of true witness. Imagine if the church was trained like this. But adventure, we would have gotten a president that is filled with the power of God. A man who walks with the leading of the Holy Ghost. But you see, the church concentrated on those that have the callings of ministry. And so when you see a young man... <laughs> He's calling, he's into the business world. You take him out of Bible study. He doesn't attend conferences that has to do with prayer and fasting. He, all he attends are financial seminars. Money doesn't scare demons. Oh. There are big men traveling from different countries to different countries for head conditions. Take care of your demons before you look for money. Because when you get the money, they'll collect it. Are we together? Pray in the Holy Ghost one minute. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen, listen. I read a book about the Azusa Street Revival last week. Titled, they told us their stories. And I, I, I saw my hands shaking by the statements about life that were lived years before. That's not my emphasis. The pioneer of the revival, William J. Simmons, said something. He said, this kind of revival, you see. see I, I saw a man without hands. Sometimes you begin to wonder the kind of faith certain men carried. A man without hands. He stood and stretched forth his hands and the hands was growing out with veins, with blood, with vessels. And he said something. He said in a hundred years to come, this kind of revival will burst out across the nations of the world. But the difference is this and that's where the church is missing it. It will not be a one spot revival. It will be scattered everywhere enough to confuse the devil such that he won't know where to put his attention upon. That's what I came to do tonight. That your attention not be on a man. What we can do, you can do. If you will pursue this God the way we do. Check every man greatly used by God. They love God more than others do. They are willing to go the extra mile and do things that others will count costly. Just to carry his raw fire. Even if you will not get serious with your life. For the sake of the destinies attached to you. I am not coming to tell you to stop doing your business. But carry the fire before they close it. I'm not saying you don't need to marry. No, marry. But don't let the devil bastardize your marriage before you get this done. I'm not saying you shouldn't get into politics. But don't let them put you into prison and the utter, uttermost part of Kuje because you are, you are framed by a fraud case. No, you can be in your office and discern and say, Adamu, I saw what you people are planning. When you come to work tomorrow, we'll discuss better. That's the kind of dispensation we are about to get into. Men that are filled with the Spirit of God. Can we pray one prayer tonight? Rise up to your feet. You know, one time I was called to come pray on a business. The business was doing well, and a man came into that business environment and was prizing the goose. How much is this? How much is this? And the business clue. I didn't say a spirit, a man. And he did that to a believer that attend church every day. See, that you are moving with engineers does not make you engineer. Oh. So that you are in church does not mean you have God. <laughs> Do you know you can be staying in staff quarters does not mean you are a lecturer in this school. You, you can be staying in staff quarters. You, you understand? Does not mean everybody in staff quarters are lecturers. Put your fire upon my life that we answer the cry of my generation. Lord, put your fire upon my life that we answer the crown have you met certain people that carry the genuine fire of God and they stand before and you know the atmosphere is different 
I read the story of great woman of God, I mean Mark Fassin. Very pretty woman. Do you know how she does her crusade? She goes in front of the church and wear a very nice Cinderella dress and just stand like this. And people get attracted by beauty to watch. And when they watch, she will begin to direct them that they should enter for more photos. Because that's the crusade about to start. And then you are in Mina. You are in that location. A witch doctor will gather people and be playing with snake. You two will foolishly go and watch to see what they are doing. Then possibly they won't enchant you and your money disappear. I've seen all kind of nonsense. How can you be coming to church for 10 years and they still press you at night? How? You know, I told you, I said possibly the person doing that just joined witchcraft two months ago. An apprentice. I remember a, a story I heard about history. How a man was lit in a session and suddenly they fired him with paralysis. And while he was there struggling with his health, a young little lady, five years old, just came out and said, Sorry, sir, I just said I should test to oh, sorry. I didn't mean it. It's testing. <laughs> See, when it comes to your work with God, don't live in this. You don't cover this thing with suit. You don't cover it with dressing. If you have the fire, you have the fire. If you don't let the devil waste your life. Life is a battlefield. Go to the business world and see the kind of things happening there. I remember the story told about a man by great servant of God, Dr. Lukoya. How a man came to him for deliverance because it was his time to die. What's happening? He said there is a bottle with a snake and water inside. That's what I drink. Once I go to bid for contract, they hear my voice. And there are believers that will come and say, I don't know, they didn't pick me. They didn't carry me. You are the one that is thinking that ordinary. People are living life in a different height and dimension. Don't let the devil waste your life. Don't! That they fire an arrow and you just collapse and die. Why? Pray in the Holy Ghost rockedly for one minute. Lopos my life! Jesus name we pray. Amen. Wake up! You don't know the manipulations going on. One time when I was running my master's program, I was in my class alone just after the lectures, everybody went. I said, let me just sit down to meditate. And while I was there, they didn't know because the class was all locked. I just on the AC everywhere. Window class is locked. My lecturer was standing there. So he saw another lecturer from far. Call names. And he said, how far now? Where are you doing? What are you doing? So the guy approached him. And they were talking by the side of the window. And he said to him, he said, my department is giving me issues. He said, come, let me give you something now. They will be fearing you. I had to peep to be sure there are professors talking. Go to your village and see where professors are carrying goats without slippers inside bush. Go. Then you know that life is not to be lived to chance. Are we together? Don't live your life to chance. Your destiny will not fulfill itself. You must be willing to stand and fight for the fulfillment of your destiny. See, listen. I started by saying don't get carried away. It's a body night I came to preach with tonight. Because our average believer right now does not even know why he's existing. That's why there is so much of depression everywhere. Have you not seen people with so much of money committing suicide? Because they got all the money and then feel unfulfilled. They begin to wonder, what did they even create me for? So don't spend all your life doing the things that God never sent you to do. Don't spend all your life. How to contact the fire, number one. Pray the Holy Ghost where you are sitting. Meeting, pray the Holy Ghost. How to contact the fire. Number one, have a solid altar. Have a solid altar. Staying with God is non-negotiable in your pursuit of power with God. Staying with God is non-negotiable. Jesus had the busiest of schedules, yet he still had time to stay with God. Luke 21 verse 37. He said, day after day, he will go about teaching in the temple. Then from evening, he will go to the Mount of Olives and pray out. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. He said, before the dawning of the day, he will go to a solitude place to pray. Such that his disciples will come asking, Master, where are you? And when they find him in that solitary place, they said to him, All men seek thee. When you go alone, it is men that will be looking for you. All men, not some men, all men seek thee. We must stop this butter Christianity. Are we following tonight? We must stop this bread and butter Christianity and have time of fellowship with God daily. 
it was the culture of the early church it was that they were going to stay alone with god not for a service that they met a man at the beautiful gate and commanded the lamely feet to receive strength the bible said they were going at the hour of prayer they had hour of prayer do you have a daily hour of prayer stay with god you can't wait on god and be wasted by men stay with him stay with god there is stop back that fellowship with him the bible speaking in psalm 91 and verse 1 is that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under what the shadow of almighty stay with him give me psalm 105 verse 17 to 22 he said and that man he sent a man afore them whose name was joseph and he was there until the time that his word came and when that word came what happened <laughs> the bible says he was set above the prince of egypt such that he was appointed to teach the prince's wisdom stay with god tell your neighbor stay with god luke 24 verse 49 jesus said i am going to the father i leave you with the promise of the holy spirit Beat make no attempt to do things by your effort except you be endued with what power see listen listen you must get to a point where you understand that to cheat this system to survive in this world you must play by a different set of rules a christian businessman that tries to do business the way dangote will do it will never beat him in this realm you cannot beat them on their secrets and we follow him the bible says that we are in this world of it so we must play by the secrets of the kingdom we belong and where we get those secrets and strategies is where we stay with god number two honor god genuinely and how do we show honor to god number one through our obedience cultivate a rugged style of obedience number two through our service serve god genuinely be up and doing when it do with God and his kingdom. The Bible speaking in Psalm 22 and verse 30. says a seed will serve him. And it shall be counted for a generation. A seed shall serve him. How do we honor him? Through our lifestyle. John 8, 29. Give me that scripture. Jesus said he that sent me is still with me. He has not left me a second. Because I do always those things that pleases him. Where you are sitting say Lord help me to please you that to prayer help me not to please you he that sent me he still me he has not left me because i do those things that pleases him he goes say lord help me to please you help me to please you we honor him through our sacrifice psalm 50 verse 5 he said gather my sins to me those that have established a covenant with me by what sacrifice so for every act of obedience for every act of sacrifice, for every act of genuine service, there is an impartation of fire. Men are not man to wood with this great fire and divine life because they stay in a place of prayer alone. No! But check the rock obedience to the divine. Do you know what it means for you to receive an instruction and say, leave your father's house and go to a place without a name? Do you know how certain of these men follow this God? Are we together? genuinely honor him genuinely what honor him if you honor god he will honor you before men if you honor god he will honor you you don't so much for god that he can say because of this i make a vow from today what have you done to touch his heart i'm giving you the love language of the holy spirit you know gary chatman taught love language five love language i'm telling you the love language of the holy spirit number one obedience he doesn't like to be questioned. He likes to be obeyed. Are we following? A lifestyle of what? Service. A lifestyle of sacrifice. What are you willing to do? How far can you go? How far can you stretch and stress yourself for this God? Then you see what he will make out of your life. Number three tonight. Cultivate and culture God's presence. Do things that keeps you consistently in the climate of God's spirit. Do things that keeps you in the atmosphere of his presence per time. With that kind of attitude, you can't be down. You can't feel depressed. For some of you, if it's worship song, play it. If it is praying the Holy Ghost for a few minutes, pray it. Whatever keeps you in the atmosphere of God's spirit. Your physical well-being needs 
the conduciveness of your physical atmosphere. The same way your spiritual health can also be tied to how conducive your spiritual atmosphere is. No matter how powerful, if with the swimming skills, it cannot do well on land. Are we together? No matter the kind of someone I give to you tonight and the secret and the key, that's all that your key holder, you cannot hold it again. Or the ladders that you have gathered. If the atmosphere is not right, they won't find fruit in your life. Are we following? There are atmospheres that can suffocate secrets. Suffocate secrets. Suffocate the life of a believer. Make sure you stay consistently in the atmosphere of God's spirit. I told a story of a great servant of God in Ghana. He said to us, he said one time, listen, he was traveling and so much in a haste for a meeting. And so while he got to a point, the policeman looked at him and said, stop. He said, I'm a man of God, please, I'm in haste. He said, stop. And he became angry. And he just chanted a few chants. And suddenly his eyes opened. So he told the policeman, he said, I am seeing right now that your wife and your son is in the hospital. In 30 minutes, the guy is dead. The man said, Ogana, true, Ogana, true. Are you take? He said, I can heal him now. First, all the roja in your pocket, that right. Point is, my car. You can't carry fire and be messed around with. One time, one of our father, he said to us, he said he was traveling, I think, around Abuja, Lokoja Road. And policemen stopped him and he was in a haste for a meeting. But he said to them, he said, please, I'm a man of God, I'm in a haste. He said, I beg you, which man of God? Oh God, calm down. So he got angry. He said, may God prove to you that I'm a man of God. Instantly, he ran mad. The other policemen started begging, oh God, I joke with joke, I beg. Oh God, I beg. <laughs> Are we together? Maintain the climate of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5 and verse 18 to 20. He said, but be not drunk with wine hearing in essence. But be filled and plified, says stimulated, compelled by the Holy Spirit. How do you do that? Verse said to us, he said, by what? Singing to yourselves in hymns, in spiritual songs, in psalms. That's how you get your spirit energized. That's how you get your spirit energized. Are we together? Pray in the Holy Ghost one minute. Number four, build your faith. Build your faith. Faith and exploit go hand in hand. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 33 tells us about great men that did great exploit in God. And he said that did that on the vantage point of what faith? Faith and fear cannot work hand in hand. If you will accomplish so many great things in life, you must work on your faith. Some of you, the way you are so scared is a torment. The Bible is speaking in 1 John chapter 4, 16. It says for fear, had a fear had a torment build your faith build your confidence in this God and see there is no way I can pray for it to happen for you tonight you have to do it by exercising your faith are we together Hebrews chapter 4 no 5 Hebrews 5 14 he said they who through use have exercised their senses to be able to discern between good and evil Hebrews 5 14 exercise your if you want to develop muscle in the physical what do you do you begin to exercise yourself you carry weight if you want to develop spiritual muscles of faith exercise it put your faith to work are we together what can you say in your resume of your work with god that i have done to demonstrate my faith in this god the way you begin to arrange your working experience in your cv for a job where you stand before God, what kind of a walking experience with him will you portray to say, see the ways I demonstrated my faith. Are we together? See the ways I demonstrated my faith. I prove to this God that I believe so much in him. Are we together? Without a rugged level of faith, you can't accomplish great feats in life. Are we together? You cannot. So build your faith. Number five, gain understanding. First John chapter 1 or John chapter 1 rather from verse 1 to 3 the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was with God verse 2 the Bible says in him was life and life was what? the light of men 3 he said this light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not this light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there is an impartation of fire and power that comes from the revelation of the word. Such so that you have so gotten the light of it that you encounter the angel of that scripture. One of my son and I were discussing some few weeks ago. 
and he was telling me about a great man of God who was stopped by armed robbers <laughs> and they brought the guard they asked the car, uh, driver to wind off wind down and the man was sitting there and they were looking for him and the driver was surprised and the boy is there what happened see first the answer is not in the car and he gave them only one scripture verse it is by his mercies that we are not consumed you didn't see what he saw the man has got it point he has contacted the preservation power that comes from mercy so that such men can stand at such a spot and shout your mercy and they become invisible you can be shouting it on your life and not by just that mystery they become invisible john chapter 8 verse 32 he said the truth you know shall set you free so revelation is a liberation on itself revelation liberates itself Gain understanding. Gain understanding. Number six. Be full of love for God and for his people. Be full of love for God. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. He said be grounded in love. Give me that scripture. He said that you may be, you, you may be richly be grounded in love. And you will be able to comprehend that the height, the breadth, and the length of this love. And then you shall be filled with all the food. The Greek word pleroma with all the fullness of God you shall be filled first Kings chapter 3 and from verse 3 to 4 the Bible says and the King Solomon loved the Lord King Solomon loved the Lord and that love pushed him in one day verse 4 the Bible says he sacrificed upon a thousand bond offerings do you know what it means to bring a thousand cows and begin to kill them one by one? Such that God had to appear. So no. What did they look for? Have you done something that looks so strange to the heavens? And they are wondering whether a mortal man took such a step. He genuinely loved God. He genuinely loved God. What's your love like? What's your love? The Bible is speaking about Jesus in Matthew chapter 14 verse 14. He said, and he saw the multitude. They were battered and scattered. He was moved with compassion. At the heights of compassion is the release of fire. The power and the fire of God moves on the torrents and the winds of compassion. Where there is heights in compassion, there is release of fire. Compassion no pity. Compassion is compelled passion. A passion that pushes you to take a step. Be crazy in love for God. First John chapter 4 verse 16. He said for we know that he that loveth God dwelleth in God. For we know that he that loves God what? Dwells in God. So show me the degree of the power you carry. I will trace it to the degree of your love for and for his people. He that love God dwelleth in God. First King 19 and verse 10. So what's your proof of love for him? Number one, you obey his words. Number one, you obey his words. Psalm 119 verse 97 to 100. First Samuel 13, 14. Number two, you will love his house. Psalm 122 verse 1. Psalm 69 verse 9. David said, the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. You will love his house. I told you I in the early days of grace for three years. I will clean the yes. and still minister to the people. You can't be late. I will then they will come and sit down. I cleaned my church chairs in my local assembly in Zaria for 19 years. 19 years. And I still came first to Sunday school. People giving you reasons why. I come to clean, go back home dressed and come before them. And I remember when I was doing those things, a prayer I kept praying. Lord, as I beautify your house, beautify my life. <laughs> See, fire is not released just by prayer and fasting alone. There are secrets in this God. You will love him. You will love his words. You will love his house. You will love his people. You can't say you are filled with the Holy Spirit and behave like evil spirit to everyone. Say you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are like evil spirit everywhere. Some of you have even taken the assignment of the devil. Now in your hostel, your house, in your local government, you are the accuser of the brethren. You used to smell sin everywhere. You, you are a spiritual policeman appointed by God over the earth. <laughs> See, you can't be an accuser and an intercessor at the same time. You can only be one. So when you see yourself living so much in accusation, you have left your responsibility of intercession. You can't be. The Bible says he stands there to make it make intercession. But the devil stands to become what? An accuser of the... Don't become like the devil. Some of you think it's today call you which you are one. I'm telling you how you can discern it now. They don't need to tell you. You are behaving like one. It's, you know it's a craft. 
That's why they call it witchcraft. Is it you can learn is a skill. You can you don't know. You are just happy to see something bad happen to somebody. You are already in witchcraft. You must not fly. If I don't start, you used to be more wicked. Rise up to your feet tonight. Listen, we don't have much time to make the impact we want to make. Please do all you can to carry the fire of God. The raw fire of God that can give answers. Be pain by the pains. Be touched by their feelings. Be touched by their feelings. Be pain. Do you know how sometimes I feel? My children are with me. When something negative happens in this territory, sometimes you can even see literal tears coming out of my eyes. Sometimes I wish I can solve all the problem because I feel that's why he positioned me there. That's how pained I can be. You know that's how pained the great servant of God Elisha was when the woman told, told him a son was dead. He said, ah, and God hid this thing from me. He was pained. Do you know how pained Jesus was when he heard that the John, the, John the Baptist was in place on the, on the platter? The Bible says he went to the Mount of Olives and stayed there all through the night. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. At every given location you are part time, you are not there for, by a mistake. You are there for a purpose. Say it again. At every given location you are part time, you are not there by a mistake. You are there for a purpose. Turn to somebody and tell the person, at every given location you are part time, you are not there by a mistake. You are there for a purpose. So it means that family situation that you are burdened about is your job to change. See, listen, listen. I won't lie to you. I have pressed into God on certain issues. I've seen instantaneous answers without struggle. I've pressed into God on certain issues. It took a week, some took a month, some took years. But I will not keep quiet till I see a change. The Bible is speaking. He said, Woe are those that sit at ease. In Zion, become so uneasy to be at ease, become so restless to be at rest till you see the fulfillment of the ordinations upon your life. I told myself, I will do all I can to be a true and perfect witness. God, being called a man of God is not a guy name that I bear, it's only a ridicule and an insult upon me that men will come before my table and I have no answer to give. Are we together? your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost and say Lord man to me with your fire tonight five minutes we are done Man to me with your fire tonight. Oh Lord, 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 I wanna know you. I wanna know you. I wanna know you. I once you are hungry, the fire will drop on you tonight. I, I came to set fresh fire upon altars tonight. That coldness and that lukewarmness, that laziness. You, you wake up to pray, you off the alarms all. You set 15 alarms, you off all yourself. And you did not even know you were offing them. It's a mystery. There is a fire that can get into your being. You will lose the desire for sleep. You will lose the desire Listen, I, I told my children some few days ago while we were praying at night, I said, the same way some people are having insomnia or love for sleep. No, they say, I can't do without sleeping. That's how some people cannot do. They can't sleep, no matter what they do, rather. Are we together? The same way, something can take a hold of you. While still around the campus, I came to the department one day, and while I was entering, I saw my friends discussing that the new HOD said, because they're very... He said that the first class are too plenty. We're just three. So he said, they are too plenty. They have to drop them. And I smiled. I said, it is either I go or it goes. In three days, he resigned. Three days. While I was in the campus, pastor, you know the story. One time, I think we're still using Asadel towards this um, um, his environmental side. That's where it was then. 
we were having a incident and they rushed to me. I said, what's the problem? They said they saw a poster placed all over the campus. You remember the story? They call the names of lecturer that they, they will kill and that Christians should not pray again. I said, really? I said, I am coming. So I left what I was doing. I ran to the hostel. I think that was block A then. I stood and saw the poster at the top point. I read it and when I was done, I said, oh God, take me out of this campus within three days or take the person that wrote this out. Who came to carry him? SSS. Three days. They came to bundle the Amir that you want to set the school of fire. One time I saw the security guys. I, I think we were having prayer that night and I saw them came to the, where the office was and they said them, um, that they said they are doing they want to investigate and I asked them a simple question I said who told you they said them down home at mommy's kitchen <sighs> trouble you can look for were you there I said oh God take me out of this place within three days or take her out she left see don't live a life where the devil make you look like like you are nothing carry this for real you, you want to hypnotize me are you crazy can you hypnotize everybody some men came not even with notice with guns and a prophet made them blind and let them say follow me are we together you know sometimes i'll be traveling and my children will say papa you travel too much be careful of the road i say they should catch me bandits they should carry me don't pay anything they will release with a bag we know how to leave this thing in upper case capital letters and we set that place. Don't live your life like Christianity is a joke. Like this God is not real. That's why I told you what to do to carry this fire. A friend of mine, the story my, my, a friend of mine said to me last week. He said, be careful to be sure you have fire. A witch told a woman, you can't do me anything. The woman killed her in one hour. She dies, she's six feet down. You told me I will see. You want to die? You want to, you want to go off? Do you know the kind of beast that have walked into my house, walked into my room? You were there the day a bed came in. I said, see this thing, though. All of an carry Bible. You read Psalm 1 to 40, 40 chapters. You do. You. Belago Sidi Yakotush. Kabeda. That last day. I will kill you. Are we together? You know, some of you think ministry ends in this pulpit. I come here and I speak over your family, your, and you think I just go to sleep like that? If some of you see what we see half, you'll be having some insanity issues. If you see what we see half. Early days of the ministry. I remember when we come to the office, we'll see they'll come and put pot and leaves. They found it in front of my door. You want to kill me? Impossible. I won't let them waste my life like a chicken. I won't. I told my sons, I say, why I'm ready to kill myself and pray this way. I pray is we become so insultive to it that policemen or umbrella came and they shot me. And that was the end of Grisham. It's an insult. Lift up your hands and pray tonight. Listen, you know what I'm trusting for from God tonight? That he will mantle you so much with his fire that you, are, you will sit in your sitting class and you just need, ah, demons will jack out because of fire. Demons will jack out. You can't see me in your class, but I have you there. My assignment put the fire on you. Put the fire. That's, listen, listen, listen. The Bible says one of the strategy that Samson used to defeat the silly Philistines was that he found foxes and tied their tails two by two and he set fire and they caused great havoc to the camp of the wicked. Just one man standing in front of a puppy doing great things for God is not impactful when you can't see the same result from the people. You will pray this one prayer tonight. Lord mantle, Lord, mantle me with your fire. See, listen, listen. You know, some of my children begin to testify last semester and previous semester some of the things I taught them. How that you can, you can be forgetful or you forget something and you remember by the spirit because the spirit does not forget. You go to the hall, you are stranded. You look at the papers. They blank your brain. Why? How? Why? <laughs> Why did they blank your brain? He said, this Daniel found 10 times better. I told you, of course, since I went to write while still on the campus, the exam, I couldn't solve one question. I stand before the God who called me into this mission and trusted me with his grace. I just dropped the paper and everything. I heard the mouse. I said, oh, you computer. Every answer I take now, in the name of Jesus, recognize it as the right answer. Now, I'm not saying that is what I did all through my life. I was under a condition where the only hope I had was God. Are we following? So you don't go sleep all your night without reading. And they say, Papa, say, hold the computer. They will give you two F, one and an awaiting F. 
and that the, that course were only two in the whole engineering that had it a can you pray tonight lord mantle me with your fire yeah, see listen you see I, I i want you to get a clarity because we pray just once we pray just once somebody called me some few years now last year and said to me the lady which was the, the friend was just walking through the road and she didn't know what the man said to her that's how the man held her hand crossed the other road put his hand on her womb tell her to take bike did all he was doing and reached a point and told her to go when she reached there then her sense came back and they called me no womb again one of them while i went to josh she was just in me she went to withdraw money entered the kekena pep and the man was they were doing their normal way of hypnotism say go i will tell you a story about your life go this and she was saying in her mind they can't catch me i'm, I'm an igala girl they can't catch me they can't catch me sat down the man was saying she sat down like this she didn't know when she has given them the whole of her money and she, she was shouting they can't catch me she thought it's by more, mere words that you will not fall victims into the hands of the wicked you heard the story of how they wanted to do glory dome last week comfortably i like the way papa put it a goat going to greet a lion you want, like he said imagine they don't have the holy ghost the fire was not there the man will comfortably dupe such a glory street inside church some of you know how many kind of things you have sent online that like there's this business when you put your money to times by three then bring off when you sent it then it came back that's why you need what the fire can we pray tonight oh god man soul me with your fire raise your voice and pray <laughs> Have them, have them. Holy Ghost. Lift up your hands everywhere. God of my color of my life. God of my fathers. Belagadosi Yadegedesh. Right now, under the sound of my voice, let your fire begin to mount to your people. At the count of three, clash the simmers. One, two, three. Holy Ghost. 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 See the power of God now. Help them. Help them. Help them. Help them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them for me. Bring them. Ushers, help me. Holy Ghost. I see three people at the back now. Clash the cymbals. One, two, aha. Help them. Let them wear the sound of my voice. Call of my God. Aha. Help them. Help him. Help him. Help him. Help him. Holy Ghost. Aha. Zidegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedegedeg
Wait, wait. Five people. Great healing grace. Now, class the symbols. One, two, three, four, five. Holy Ghost. Let us fall. Let us help them. Let the fire fall. Hello, Madonna. Wait. Lift up your hands, everyone. It's been a long while. I stared on the prophetic river. Spirit of the prophets. Break loose upon this house, all shall stay on your guard. At the count of three, no more with the devil have away your family, and you will be blind. At the count of three, everyone with a prophetic grace, everyone with a prophetic flavor. I I command eyes to open. One, two, three, eyes open. open. Eyes open, eyes open, eyes open, eyes open. Lord, we are at the prophets in this house tonight. 14 of them, Holy Ghost, a fire they can't withstand. One, aha, uh -huh. I shall serve them. Two, two, three, four. Now on the power go, we pick somebody there. Us as there now, aha. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pick them, pick them, pick them, pick them. Oh, my eyes have seen the king, the one upon the throne who reigns forevermore. Lift up your hands, everybody. When is the exams? Monday. I wanted to do something, but it will be too much. 24 hours. I will pick some people now into heavenly experiences for 24 hours. Just watch that. 24 hours now. I'm going to ask God to open your eyes into the heavens at the sound of my voice. God of my call. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, where are those you want to call to yourself? At the count of three, I help them. Let the heavens open. Take them into heavenly experiences. Let them be caught up now. One, two, three. Holy Ghost. Let the river flow. Help them. Let the river flow. I take you into the heavens now. Help him. I take you into the heavens now, 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 now. Give them cut up experiences now, now. I hear God say to me that He's working upon the mind, the memory of certain people. You have struggled, spirit of prophecy, gift of interpretation. Break open now. Wait. Break open, Holy Ghost. Now, awesome God, how great are you, are God, mighty are your miracle, we stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you. I hear God say to me, we had a peace, and I came and I said that there is an ability in God that can make the memory of a man ten times better. You remember our daughter? She was struggling with two point something. That semester, she had all A's but one B. That is, she hold a book. Just a service. 
Why some are just wondering, can it happen? Some of you are there saying, Lord, it's my need. They've called my case. That same all year tonight, I pray. At the classes of the symbols, as I count one to five, that all year that can make the memory of a man ten times better. That grace that can boost the reasoning of a man. God of my call, God of our fathers, right now begin to mantle your people. One, two, three, aha, four, help them, five, mantle them. I boost your memory ten times better, ten times better, ten times better, ten times better. Help them everywhere. Lord, I bless your people tonight. Lift up your hands. Okay. I'm seeing worship angels around the choir and they will attach themselves to some of you right now. Just clash the cymbals for me and watch. Around the choir, worship angels. The release of new songs, new unction and fire. Clash the cymbals for me. Why I lift up your hands? Lord, I pray right now. Let your angels be released for your people. In the name of Jesus, worship angels, realms of songs, realms of songs. Let your oil come upon their voices now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray for your people tonight. Let your blessing rest upon them. Let your hands be strong upon their lives. Let the heavens over them be opened. Anyone under any form of satanic bondage, you are an official in any fellowship, you can connect for your people. What he says to one, he says to all. I must be in your meeting to pray. Anyone under any form of satanic harassment, I want to pray right now. Just don't, don't respond, amen. I just want to speak. Under the sound of my voice, anyone under any form of satanic affliction, satanic harassment, Right now, Satan, pack your bags and go. Anyone under the sound of my voice, under the torments of hell, lift up your hands everywhere. I set you free now. In the name of Jesus, Satan, lose your hold, lose your grip, lose your hold. Let your fire rest now in the name of Jesus. Upon anyone under the sound of my voice, an evil pronouncement is resting. A generational cause is resting. A demonic pattern in the bloodline. I declare and I declare, may mercy speak for you. I command a pronouncement cancelled. That cause cancelled. That cause is cancelled. That cause is cancelled. That harassment on the LC is now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The beauty of Christianity is that we can impute upon our natural effort. Natural. That's what makes Christianity different from another religion. We can impute the supernatural upon the natural. I decree, may God do for you what you can do for yourself. Someone is sick and you are saying, Lord, help touch this person. Today is Friday. By Tuesday, by Tuesday, before exactly 4.30 p.m., you will get a call. It will give you a testimony about that person. I said by Tuesday, on or before 4.30 p.m., you will get a call and a miracle will happen on that health. You will receive a testimony for that situation. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lord, I start in the capacity of my call. Lift up your hand. And I stand in the capacity of my office. I declare and I declare. Whatever your people has asked of you, grant it for them. I turn your desires into testimonies. I turn your desires into testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Who have faith to check Israel account balance? In the next 10 minutes, you did not put it there. I just saw it. The Lord bless and keep. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. You came here with a health condition, a health challenge. I roast it by fire. I command your bodies to be healed. I command your health to be restored. In the name of Jesus, 
that disease, that sickness, that infirmity is gone out of you. It is gone out of your body. It is gone out of your blood. In the name of Jesus. Bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. The Lord grant you his peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just lift your hands and celebrate him. Thank you for what he has done. You want to say, Pastor, please help me. I want to be born again. All right? Oh, I want to dedicate my life. My work with God is no longer strong. It's nothing to write home about. I want the Holy Ghost to come mind upon my life and help me to live the Christian race. Please, wherever you are, you are in any of this category, let me see your hands up. Very quickly, let me see your hands up. It's a wonderful decision you want to take tonight. I want to strengthen my work with God. I want to know Jesus better. I want the Holy Ghost to come fresh upon me tonight. Wherever you are, let me see your hand. If you are waving, if your hands are up, let me see it well. Let me see your hands. Please wave it up. Let me see your hands up. Thank you, our Father. If you are doing so, please come to the front. If you are waving your hands, please come to the front. If you are in any of these categories, please come very quickly. Let me pray with you. Lift up your hands. Lord, I release a blessing upon your people. Let your blessing sit upon them. Let your hands be strong upon them. I decree you blessed. Enjoy uncommon favor. God's grace shines upon you. God 